mainstream. It doesn't really tell the story, and that is some of the biggest reasons to explain what is going on with extras. Um, and when you're tr on a budget, extra things you cut out. You may not be doing your lattes every day at Starbucks. You may not be hitting Dunkin' Donuts, even though they say American runs on Dunkin'. You might be American runs on Key Rig, or you don't, you know, they're like a dollar a pop. So you might just be brewing a normal pot of coffee to save money. And we've reached a lot of flyover country. And, and you know, people are on tight budgets these days. And we understand it uh, more than ever. But we have to take care of our families first and foremost. And that's what I'm doing, folks. Going to support my family and my future and see what God's going to do. And I'm really, I got to tell you, I'm really just very open-minded about this. And I am not saddened that it's my last show. I had uh, a lot of people say, I'm so sad. Don't be. I'm excited to see what God's going to do with his handiwork. God is able to do above and beyond uh, our wildest dreams if we'll just commit it to him. And that's what I'm doing. And that's, that's my prayer, that God would uh, open up some doors and that I'd be freed up for those opportunities. Should, they, should those opportunities become available, I'm going to be free to do it. But if I'm caught up doing this, I'm not going to be free to do that. So um, we're going to do the weekend edition of For the People starting this weekend. And um, all the details will be on the front page as they become available for the network. Uh, but for the podcast, we'll have that for you. So you'll have something to listen to of me still uh, that will summarize the uh, weekend's event, uh, week's events on, uh, on a show. We're still trying to work out the uh, details of, as far as times go. So an hour might work for the network, but maybe not two because it's a different time period. So we don't know if we're doing an hour or two, to be honest with you. Uh, but there'll be something there for you to listen to. And uh, if you're just catching our broadcast, we've been doing two hours a day, Monday through Friday, for quite a bit of time. And uh, we did that for stations that wanted to fill uh, an extra hour. And we did it uh, to be on Liberty and same network wants to put us on the weekends, loves us. We love the relationship with them. It's great. And they, they're on some great stations across the country and reaches some great markets. And I, I couldn't have been happier with everything that they've done for me, they really opened up the doors and they didn't charge me any money to be on the network, uh, which was really awesome. Uh, they just believed in us and as we believe in what they do there. But, you know, Liberty really is a great name to explain what their mission is. They're all about freedom and liberty and freedom of the airwaves. And that's what we have endeavored to do to keep it free. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, it's, you know, it's challenging. And I know what they do is challenging because their listeners support it too. What they do is they take donations and it's a labor of love. You know, at the end of the day it is, but um, I just, I, I got a you know kid that needs to go to school and I need to pay for that and school clothes and, keeping tires on the car and all that. And so, so the, the extra time that I put in, uh, you know, six to eight hours a day that it's been taken during the weekdays to do the show, um, could be appropriated actually making some, some physical money, but eventually, uh, we'll get back on radio. We'll be back on television or something like that. Who knows? You might see me on the Fox news channel out of New York. You don't know. Uh, I'm a big thinker like that. Seriously. You have to be bold and courageous. And well, I started my career in New York City, so who knows? That would be cool. WABC. <laughs> yeah, Geraldo was on that station for a while. I don't know if he's back on. No, he's not on ABC, but he's still on Fox. I think he does the. Um, I think he does the at large show, and he does some radio. Yeah, he's on Imus and Stern. And he kind of makes the rounds and all that, but he's been a long time broadcaster as well loves radio but we'll see we'll see you know you know to me it could be new york city it could be uh rockville maryland it could be Terre Haute, indiana we don't know uh but you know somebody makes me an offer and it just looks right and we pray about it we'll just kind of see and, and to me that's exciting to see what the next chapter is going to be and i think that's cool and i think all of us have to keep ourselves open to that because a lot of us are getting older 
And a lot of us want to recreate ourselves and to do other things. And I say keep on dreaming. Um, some of the things that you're dreaming about, why don't you make reality? I tell people live like you're going to live to 100. And with that mindset, live. So there's a lot of other things that you can be doing. Live like you're going to live to 100. Okay. And for those that you that have a relationship with God, know that you're going to live for eternity. But this meat suit, this body, you're going to live to 100. And if you live like that, no telling the amazing things that you can do. But you got to set little goals. Uh, maybe not lofty goals because sometimes they're unattainable. But make daily, uh, daily inserts, you know, in into your memo or something like that. Write goals, little ones, and every single day achieve those little ones. And those little ones, they really do add up. And that's the way that you could stay focused on the bigger picture. That's what I do. But you got to set some goals, achievable goals, realistic goals. But do something. I encourage you to do it. And you have a lot to offer. A lot of you were, you know, retired CEOs, CFOs. You were accountants. Uh, you were big muckety muck. You say, well, that was back in the day. And, you know, I have arthritis and I have, you still have a brain, don't you? <laughs> uh, if you're willing to admit it, uh, you still have a brain. You'd be surprised. You know, they always say that you're, how much uh, brain power do you use at the end of the day? Uh, we, we, the, we are, we're tapped into very, very little uh, of our potential. And we should give ourselves a lot more credit as human beings. And I encourage you to be daring, be bold, be courageous, dream, think big, big thinker. Um, don't, you know, you, you got a life to live. And I think all of us are put here to do something and not to just sit around. Make a difference in your sphere of influence. You'd be surprised at things that you can do. And this might sound a little tacky, and maybe I'm dating myself a little bit, but I'm 47. I like to run, I, I like to watch the repeats of some TV shows, and one of them, Highway to Heaven with Michael Landon. I like those shows, and I'm, I didn't get to watch all of them, so I'm kind of doing a marathon. But I love the moral, the premise of the good, wholesome uh, show that they did a lot of good for people. Uh, they helped people. They stopped bad things from happening. They encouraged people. They did things like that. That's the kind of stuff that all of us should be really busy doing. Love that radio show. Yeah, he was a fallen angel or he was trying to get his wings or something, Michael Landon. But anyway, he travels with his companion. And it's just, it was really well done. I know it looks old with the cinematography, but the storyline, the premise, solid. Good stuff. Highway to heaven. You're looking for something to watch. Netflix. Look it up. Check it out. And if you can get through the old production music and some of the uh, old camera angles and things like that, the story, again, is priceless, timeless for all of us. Michael Landon was really cutting edge as a producer on that show and an actor. He was really just terrific. So we miss Michael Landon. But that for its time, Highway to Heaven, it, yeah, people still watch it testament to what they did but that's good stuff man so all of us could be angels to somebody um, out there an encouragement to somebody a blessing to somebody and to me you know live your life live like that and pay it forward these are good things to do and at the end of the end of the day uh what could be better than to help somebody else encourage somebody else love somebody else and uh what the uh, the shrinks say by doing that, it actually helps yourself and your mental capacity, and it people live longer. That's right, because you're more of a positive mindset. Your body clicks in, and you're doing something because you have a purpose. Um, Kathy Gifford, you know, she's had some controversy, as you know, but Paul Newman had given her some advice when she was really depressed about something. And the advice that Paul Newman, the late Paul Newman, gave to Kathy Gibbard was, Kathy, as long as you have a pulse, you have a purpose. And uh, somebody needed to hear that today, I'm sure. All of us have a purpose, and I believe mine has definitely been behind the microphone. It's just where and when uh, that happens on uh, another network or on another radio station or another syndication company out there that's willing to give me a 
a break or uh, maybe I become a sit in for their network, but uh, I'm going to start putting myself out there that way. But they're just saying it has to be their brand. I have to be their employee um, rather than doing my own thing. People don't like that. It's, it's a rogue thing. Uh, you go on rogue. And, you know, that's true. A lot of talk show hosts, they'll actually buy airtime on radio stations and big stations to do that. And then they make a go at it. Then they get ratings and then they get advertisers with that because of the ratings. And then they're able to, to springboard it off. We started doing the show because Chuck did the show. And I just, as a friend, I got behind him and behind the microphone, literally to hold his hand, to introduce him back to his audience. And we did that very successfully. But Chuck got sick again. And remember, Chuck reached over 300 radio stations daily. Okay. He did that for many, many years. So he had a great audience. He had millions of people that listened to him. Second only to Rush Limbaugh. Mike Levin was cutting his teeth on his show. Uh, So many other talk show hosts cut their teeth on Chuck's show. So he's a pioneer, folks. So there was a good reason why I went back on with Chuck. I worked for Chuck at the Telford Hotel for many years. My dad quit ABC to work for Chuck as the president, and he died, unfortunately, and the network died after the UAW and all that debacle. But I went on to do other things after that. I worked for Clear Channel in Rockville, Maryland, very successfully, and in Tampa, and then Salem, and Infinity Broadcast, a bunch of other networks, and did a lot of radio shows. And I never knew where this show was really going to go, other than I was trying to do a favor for a friend. And a lot of stations decided to take it. A network take, took it, but I never got paid for it. Never got any money for it. And again, it's been a labor of love. And Chuck is in a nursing home. A lot of people always ask how Chuck's doing. And Chuck is, as well as can be, he's bedridden, so he can't walk. Uh, it's not believed that he'll ever walk again. I uh, can't even get into a wheelchair these days. So he can't wheel himself around the nursing home. He's bedridden, literally. Can't take a shower. It's kind of sad. But he's entertained by Netflix. He's got an Amazon Fire, I think. His daughter comes to see him from uh, Lake City, Florida. And as much as I can from Tampa, I get in my car and head north and with some food and some gifts. And we spend a little time together and... That's which is a two and a half hour drive there and two and a half hour back, but I do it because he's a friend and we love Chuck and uh, we'll always be indebted to his brilliance and for opening our minds and educating us about government and how things really work behind the scenes, connecting the dots and the seer of seers. He was Chuck. uh, what, What do they coin him on coast to coast? The man who sees tomorrow. Literally, the man was a prophet in many respects. I'm telling you, like Edward Casey was weird. Way, I'm serious, decades ahead, way ahead of his time. Uh, to work with somebody like that was really incredible, I got to tell you, uh, to see how this man was the walking encyclopedia for just about any consumer question that you'd have, any legal question that you would have, anything government. I mean, he... Just like a sportscaster on a news station. I mean, this man uh, was just very gifted. And uh, again, he fought this uh, the swamp. I guess that's the best way to put it. But uh, I believe Chuck's efforts and for the people's efforts paved the way for Donald Trump to be able to be where he is at today. I really believe that all the pushing. Um, all the thousands of hours of airtime. Uh, we believe we were a great contributor to getting Donald Trump, even us. Yes, uh, Chuck was back on. Chuck wrote Donald and sent him his book and for many years and encouraged him to run. Many others did, but we believe that we were definitely instrumental in communicating the message of what it was we were trying to do, but set the stage um, so it was ripe to get the vote for Donald Trump. This was the populist message that was broadcast for years, decades. I uh, remember when Ross Perot ran, uh, Pat Schott, the economist, the world acclaimed economist, who was the vice president, uh, presidential nominee under Ross Perot. He was my boss. I worked for Pat Schott at the network in White Springs, Florida. 
He came to work. That's how important Chuck was.